Hey everyone, happy new year to Stop Dub Talking with American Folk, alternative indie singer-songwriter and NBC The Voice Season 17 alumni, Mendeley of Allen Blitz. We talked about hometown of Santa Barbara, story behind his real full name, defining genre, The Voice, musical inspirations, Gaia House Collective, Berkeley College of Music, upcoming tour, and more. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Mendeleev. Mendeleev, hello, happy new year, welcome to the show. Hello, yeah, happy new year to you too. Jig thank me. you so thank you so much for joining me today it's it's you know i've i've seen your audition on the voice and i remember watching the season um as a whole and something that stuck out to me and a lot of people don't know this probably they do but some who don't know you your real name is crazy like, yeah your your real name is crazy and, and i'm about to, i'm about to say this right now uh to start you the are. interview off um, oh my i'm gonna God. say Mendeleev, Galileo, Einstein, Pythagoras, Darwin, Euclid, Leonardo, Alan Blitz. Lawless. Oh my God. Perfect. Nice. Nailed it. Yeah. First, I, I yeah, you memorized that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, it, that that's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm glad you just said my whole name. It's not every day that I get to hear people do that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, when people say that name, what comes to mind? For other people or for myself? I mean, that could be for anybody. Uh, you know, there's some really common questions. There, there are like theme questions, uh, maybe like five that are consistently the first that I mostly hear. Like, is that on your birth certificate uh, or, you know, driver's license, that kind of stuff? Or your parents actually did that? Or are your parents scientists are a big question. Uh, uh, and then the, the the most common one, funny enough, is is what did you write on your SATs? Um, that's probably the most common or like bubble tests. Um, and yeah, anyways, each one of those has their own answer. I just kind of lifted them off. Um, yeah, that's those are probably the first thing that people land on. Um, yeah. But yeah, so generally, generally, I just go by I go by Lev L E V. It's easier. Yeah, um, it it it's I I've always like wanted to know how to really like what what to say for your name because you know like there's like basically three ways you can say Mendeleev actually four ways Mendeleev Mendeleev Allen Blitz uh -huh. Lev and then yeah. your full name. Yeah, um, yeah. Right? Like too. like yeah. it's it comes in four ways, but yes. they're all in unique ways, and I like that. Um, totally. Um, and you grew up in Santa Barbara. Um, I did. Yeah, uh, in Santa Barbara, in the mountains. Can you can you explain more about uh, what that life was like? Uh huh. Yeah, I was. I was. Let's see. I was born in a bathtub. Uh, I I uh, grew up in the mountains. So so in where people ask, are my parents scientists? No, they were they're more hippies and wonderful people. Um, I have two brothers. One got the philosophers. The other got the comedians. I got the scientists. We all have super long names. Um, I uh, I grew up not really wearing much shoes. Uh, I never ate meat. I, I was born a vegetarian, and so I've I've never eaten meat. Um, I've taken a bite of chicken one time. I've taken a bite of shrimp one time, um, and I'll take a bite. I'll chew it up. I'll probably spit it out. Um, let's see. I, uh, yeah, I, I grew up in a pretty musical family for the most part. Not that anyone really focused on it in a professional way, but it was always around. And my mom was a bassist. Uh, she had purple hair for the last like 40 years. Um, and then my dad, he sings and plays guitar. And my, my, one of my brothers plays a lot of drums and raps and the other one plays piano and also sings and um yeah anyways Santa Barbara yeah. is a beautiful, beautiful place I'm actually going back there next week for tour yeah absolutely and I think um what, what was your brother's names uh so so yeah the the philosophers is Lao Tzu Seattle Shankara Spinoza Socrates Siddhartha Allen Blitz and that's the philosophers we call them Lao uh Lao Tzu and and then my oldest brother is the comedians, and that's Elijah Benjamin Ramalisha Groucho Woody Allen Blitz. Uh, oh my goodness! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, indeed. Oh goodness, man. 
Uh, I remember I remember watching your audition and you were introducing your, your name. Um, and then I think it was John uh, who says that your parents are hippies and he says, thank you. So I don't have to say it. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Is, 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 right. is that is that accurate to, to say that your parents are hippies? Let's just confirm yeah, that. It is accurate. Uh, and, 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 you know, not in the traditional sense for those who understand hippie culture or hippies there's a lot of different types there's there's maybe not a lot but there's a few different types of hippies um i'd be probably put into more that like neo hippie category of of my upbringing um but but generally you know i i i think i didn't like grow up in like a little kind of hut not wearing deodorant but my mom did have the unscented tom's deodorant and again i did you know i don't like shoes very much and i did grow up vegetarian uh, but they were more a little more social activist hippies um they were very engaged politically um yeah yeah i think that answers it yeah for sure um and i i, I don't know that your your music is kind of all over the place it is. I was, I, I was I was looking on your Apple Music things, and yeah. once one said one said one of the genres said pop, one of them said uh, electronic, one of them said folk, one of them said alternative, one one of them said in indie. And I was talking to this one person that I also had on, and she had this musical style of swing, jazz, blues, um, and then some other like folk type of music. And then I kind of asked her about like what is what do you define your music as like what what do you define genre as, mm -hmm. um, and it got like a really interesting uh, perspective out of her, um, yeah. and and sometimes sometimes I feel like I want to change up questions, but at the same time in my head I'm like hey don't be afraid to ask the same question to somebody because yeah. you get two different perspectives, and yeah. something can surprise you. Right. No, I get it, man. Totally. And I, I don't mind. And, and I, I totally understand, especially if you're bringing on multiple musicians and singers, I, you know, a lot, a lot of overlapping questions will, will arise. And uh, in this case, it's a difficult question for me uh, for a magnitude of reasons. One being, I don't really understand genres very well. Um, I'm not like one who's like, they don't exist and I'm beyond borders and stuff. It's like, no, it's like, I, I think some people do study that shit and, oh, sorry. I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss. No, no, no. It, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. 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 Some people do study that. And some people do understand the, 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 the categories, the genres, the sub genres, the sub sub genres and all the umbrellas that like go into me. And it's like, I, I really don't understand those those labels or nor have i really tried to um i just like to experiment um i'm also a producer a music producer so like i i engineer and make it and mix it and master and do all that end of things as well as the writing and recording stuff so when us uh bedroom producers uh uh like of course i collaborate with people but a lot of the time it's just me at my computer um, by myself. And then that opens up a whole plethora of, of what inspires me. And I really, I did grow up listening and loving a lot of classic folk music, like which I did on The Voice and, and Bob Dylan. And my parents really raised me with a lot of 1960s and 70s folk music from, yeah, Dylan, Johnny Cash, Neil Young, Simon and Garfunkel, Van Morrison, Crosby, Stills, Nash, those are, some a few um examples but over time i mean like i'm a 90s kid i grew up you know listening to all of that stuff and i was in california you know it's so sublime and and uh um a lot of a lot of punk music and post pop punk music like green day and all that stuff when i was a kid uh and but eventually in the last i'd say 10 years maybe a little more now in the last 10 years or maybe 15, I've gotten so into uh, electronic music. Uh, and I think the world has in a lot of ways. And there's a fusion with pop music uh, of, you know, it's hard to differentiate pop and electronic in a lot of ways now. Uh, and specifically, I went through like 10 years ago, there was this deep phase of retro 
80s funk dance music. And I was like, oh, this is such a phase that's going to die. And here we are 10 years later, and it's still going strong. I, I think I'm not one who's kind of tapped into the general pop zeitgeist of of the world and what people are listening to. I don't know what's on the top 40 right now. Um, I'm just I'm very isolated in that sense. But I do hear retro 80s electronic dance music, funky stuff everywhere I go, uh, even now. And again, it's been over a decade and it's still here. So these trends ebb and flow. And it's not like I'm intentionally riding these waves to see what's popular. I'm like, I just get really inspired by certain things. And so I see if I can make it and then maybe fuse that with some acoustic stuff mixed with some of this electronic stuff or some of the folkier stuff mixed with some of this dance music. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we we could literally spend the whole interview talking about this, but uh, and, and I'm down to. But I, I think that kind of surface level uh, answers the, the gist of what you were getting at. No, honestly, it's completely fine to to really like explain sort of your thought on it, because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of interviews when people ask them questions, it's like they kind of rush into and then they interfere with their answer and they have to cut them off. And yeah. because, because because they have some sort of time limit on it and, and yeah. they can't talk that much. But but now coming on a podcast, I feel like right. it's like now it's the freedom where people can just sit down and actually have a thoughtful conversation rather than yeah. having someone just tell them while well, we're running out of time here and cutting them off. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, absolutely. I, I was I, I want to go back to the interesting point that you made about your your brothers and your name, your your, your full name. And yeah. I was I was watching the I remember the Ellen show. And it was the, the there was this guy that did this kid that impersonated Elvis Presley, and he was co having a conversation uh, with one of the hosts, and he asked him, um, "What is your name?" <laughs> but like, um, he he kind of because he obviously interprets Elvis Presley, and he kind of like nonchalantly says, "My brother's name, uh, my my brother Presley," and then and then he kind of like stopped him and he says, "Your brother who?" Presley <laughs> and he's like ah uh, you know, yeah. like, like you know like those those types of like just the people who nonchalantly think that like Elvis Presley as Presley named after his brothers is really hilarious to me um, yeah, yeah 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 right or like I like it's even with your name I'm like I still can't believe like that's actually your name like, yeah. like like I remember I was just talking with my brother about this um because we we were going to some shopping this morning and we were in an uber and i said that i was i was about to talk with you um and i told him your full name and and he's cool. like man that's interesting how like you know like you're named after like so many of these you know back in those days i don't know what they are but um um but let's we can talk about that Pretty and legendary we, people. There's some there's some big shoes to fill there for sure. Yeah, but uh we can talk about that all day. But what I want to talk about is um I remember watching TikTok and I saw the I don't know how to pronounce this. Is it the Gaia Music Collective? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah. And and I remember seeing that you guys did this like sort of like this, I don't know what it is. Uh you kind of hold a note for like 20 something seconds um until the yeah. new year happened. <laughs> and, it was, and then after that, it was kind of like a jam session and just like a party. Um, yeah, just just tell just tell me about that. Totally. Well, first off, I'm I'm kind of new to taking TikTok seriously, um, and and something that inspired me about it was was uh, Gaia Music Collective. The name of this this thing that my friend started. He it actually really popped off through TikTok, and it was a post that went viral. And now it's like he's making it, trying to make it his full time job. And so I don't think I would have discovered this thing either if it wasn't for TikTok. Um, but yeah, so that was a New Year's Eve celebration. They do a they they do a handful of of different events, and I'm kind of new to it too. Only in the last maybe like six months have I kind of tapped in. They do monthly open mics, which that was a, a, like open mics, but curated uh, for for certain individuals. Um, you know, there might be like five or 10 people on the lineup to share a song or two. Um, and then they do also weekly 
uh, singing nights, like collective singing nights. So there is the beginner uh, or, or kind of all skill levels are invited. I went to this week and candlelight session in the loft of the Lower East Side with like 50 people all just kind of vocal improvisation and that kind of thing. Uh, and some people who are more skilled and some people who are never really sang in front of people before. Uh, and so you get that whole wide range of things. And then last night I went to um, yeah, a more exclusive advanced vocal um, improv group of, there's like 11 of us uh, doing a little more skilled uh, or intensive uh, 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 listening and, and vocalizing. Really, really cool. I'm, I'm so happy to have found this thing. And then, and then sometimes uh, these, there's a hybrid of all of this kind of stuff together. And that's what you saw where the whole night was le was this open mic for hours leading up to this New Year's countdown. And, and it's not just like, hey, here's my song and everyone sings along where a lot of those people in the crowd are capable of that you know there's certain hand signals to have people harmonize on this level or or these this group of people here are going to sing the third and then this group of people are going to sing the fifth uh and and it's, a lot of people there are skilled enough to kind of just kind of improvise and tap into it uh and so it gets really cool and then we have designated parts uh it's it's been a really special experience and so um, my goal when I'm performing, I'm always trying to get people singing along. Uh, uh, and so it's so cool to be and perform for a group where there's a lot of people that not only want to sing along, but do it in a very proficient level and elevate your performance to a whole new uh, experience. And so that led to this like half hour countdown you only saw that 20 second lead up to the the, the actual midnight on 2022 uh, to 2023. Uh, but there was like a lot like 15 maybe minutes, maybe half an hour of, of us leading in and harmonizing and oming together and then, and then circling up and then building to this kind of crescendo right at uh, midnight. So much fun. I, I genuinely could not have constructed a better transition into the new year it was a really really fun time and i'm really happy to have kind of tapped in with this yeah guy music collective man nice good reason yeah yeah like i i i've been watching the videos for a while and i'm a, I'm a big fan of the, what they put out i think it's just really cool how you know like just singer songwriters can just come together and just sing songs you know like and just play instruments and just jam out it's it's a cool thing because not a lot of things now that you see is, you know, offering programs like that or groups like that to different aspiring yeah. singer songwriters. Right. Like yeah. I remember like watching Kelly Clarkson show and they were kind of presenting this group called Songhouse, you know, just offering young people the opportunity to write with each other. And then whatever, whatever blows up on TikTok, that's the song that they record and publish uh, out to the world. Um, yeah. And I remember getting in touch with one of the one of the group members, and I'm saying, I've I've always wanted to interview her, and she's gonna come on the show. We're just trying to figure out a date and time to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to talk about Berkeley College of Music because I would bet that that would be kind of where um, you kind of rounded out your sort of your talent of music. Mm, yeah, you might be right in some ways there. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a deep question and depends on which chapter we're talking about um but yeah i did i went to berkeley in boston for undergrad uh my principal was guitar um and i went when i was 18 uh to 22 so those four years and i finished my last year when they opened up the study abroad program in valencia spain and lived there for a bit um and then i just went back to berkeley and the reason I moved to New York, I'm in New York City here, uh, was uh, I, I just graduated with my master's degree and we were part of Berkeley NYC, which was is this new program. They took over this legendary recording studio, Power Station Studios, uh, and, and it's a whole new program. So we we're the, the first class, kind of like these these beta students of, of this new program for songwriting and production, uh, which is what, yeah, I got my master's degree in. But for undergrad uh it was a big part as to you said i rounded 
my my skill set there and and i think a big part of that time in life was a very experimental life. we got a sneaker in this no room. honestly us honestly like i was i was i was about to say to like <laughs> good try yeah good try good try. that's my girlfriend sonia oh uh she she just came back in she was gonna give me this hour to myself to have this podcast with you jig me Oh, she's gone. Oh, she's leaving. Okay, bye. All right. Um, anyways, back to Burks. Um, yeah, so I went for guitar, but I did a lot there. I used the scholarship money that I got for it to do a lot of extracurricular activities there. Um, like you're you're really they kind of make you focus on an instrument. Uh, like whatever you audition with is what you stick with when you're there you can transfer if you want but um you have to re-audition uh and they're all like they have these additional classes like non-principal as they call it uh so if you're not focused on this instrument you can dabble in these other ones but i've been reasonably proficient in a handful of instruments uh growing up i i took years of private instruction um for drum set and for for bass guitar my mom was a bassist uh and keys piano um and not only singing and guitar so uh, those five were kind of my my main things uh and while i was proficient in guitar it was like i don't want to just focus on that so i used my time at, at undergrad to really kind of go down all those paths and i went to each one of the departments and i was like you know don't put me in these non-principal classes, put me with these, the actual people doing this stuff or, or give me private instruction for each one of these things. Um, so I did that and that was probably one of the best things I did there. Um, and I, I still believe I stay pretty proficient in those instruments, um, which is something that is hard to explain, uh, but I, I take them all very seriously and I, I think I hold them down and I have done many songs if you've looked at my spotify where i do play everything um and, and for a while that's what i wanted to to have my focus be um and my songwriting was just at that time i was just so crazy i was all over the place um i my songwriting was all over the place the way i kind of went about it was uh almost like chaos i was very very experimental uh i was you know, maybe in a phase of uh, experimenting uh, in a psychedelic way too, which I always am in a lot of ways, but this was a really intense phase when I went to college, uh, was was just kind of dabbling in a lot of um, different kind of mind altering things. And I, I looking back, it's, it's not embarrassing, but it's like, thank God I didn't release a lot of that stuff, you know, um, and, and it was, good for my growth and to see where I came in. Eventually, I had great teachers like Pat Pattinson, who is like, you know, John Mayer's teacher, Jillian Welsh's teacher, uh, a lyric writing professor at Berkeley. And my God, he's he's a guru and incredible. And, and certain other individuals there that kind of helped me help ground me. Um, but I'd say I was still even chaotic when I left Berkeley, to be honest. And and I think a lot of people do see, oh, you went to this prestigious place. That must be where you became uh, good. And it's truly not completely the case. In fact, I think it took me till I was about 25 uh, before I started really reining it in. I, I began this process maybe around the time I ended Berkeley, um, where I did a lot of street performing uh, or, or busking, like I'd be on street corners and I would um, just sing for people that don't even acknowledge your existence and try to sing over trucks and people and a busy corner street. Uh, I, again, I lived in Europe for that year and I did a lot there from uh, Sweden and, and Amsterdam uh, and, and the UK and Spain um, and kind of hopped on trains and, and, and did a lot of just street performing. And I think that really helped me develop uh, the skill set that I have today and the strength that I have today. Whereas I don't know how much I want to go on a, on the street corner right now. 
uh, I think that's an older time of my life and re requires a lot of stamina to stay mentally or physically capable to for my voice to battle all of that sound of the, the city. And but eventually I think it, it gave me thicker skin um, and that helped me ground myself in, in a deep way, in a pretty profound way. Um, and, and it seems like most of my success has come with um, holding it down. Like I get crazy, I rip on the guitar and I'll scream and I'll wail and I'll rip on a bunch of instruments and produce some crazy electronic stuff. But at the end of the day, most, most people uh, have found me and enjoy my music through three simple slow chords and me just relaxing and singing very, very uh, grounded um, into my voice. And it seems like, it seems like that's where most of my success has come from. And I plan on continuing to do that. Um, but yeah, anyways, that was a long winded answer uh, about, about Berkeley. Um, but I, it took till after Berkeley, I think, for me to really hone in um, is, yeah, anyways. Yeah, um, and with that long uh, winded answer, it, it basically has cut uh, to 10 minutes left on this meeting time. Oh, uh, really? But that's, but that's, but that's fine. Um, I, I have a few more questions here. Uh, you know, a, a lot of people have different answers for this, but I think you've already touched basically on your life philosophy through that Berkeley answer. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll just skip past that question. And I want to ask you about something I, I felt like important, which is like some instant gratification. Do you feel, you know, do you feel after your experience at Berkeley and the experience at Guy Music Collective and The Voice, do you feel sort of gratified uh, and accomplished? Yes, I do. That's that is a good question. I and and each one of these things has brought a sense of accomplishment. The voice, more than anything, was was a pretty significant validation. Um, literally, the show is based around celebrities validating your skill to the to the masses, um, and and kind of recreating or synthesizing this big stage, this big platform high-end production and 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 millions of dollars and millions of viewers and uh i i think that ultimately what that did was make me feel like what i was doing was right and working and validated um i didn't have that much not just confidence but kind of understanding and trust in my own capabilities until that moment uh, I, I, I did have that, but not to that degree. And it's been really helpful, not only in my career, and it's a great calling card to send around to people if I want to get another gig. Uh, but yes, that was profound and, and, and satisfying. Um, but on to the next. Um, and and I, I played the Rose Bowl Stadium last year for Fourth of July with my band. I'd never sang on a, on a you know, in a stadium for, you know, 20,000, 30,000 people, um, which was really rewarding. And, and uh, after that, it, it's, you know, again, on to the next, but you have a moment of just like, holy shit, this, this feels really right. And I do think that is in my future. And I'm, I hope for more and I strive for more. And I want to be better. I want to keep doing this, but more and better. Um, for more people, I would love to, I'm about to leave for tour next week on my own solo tour. Um, but the idea is to play for thousands of people every night. That is my uh, mission, especially this year. Uh, in 2020, before COVID, I, I got um, the opening act to be Ben Harper's opening act on his tour, which is one of my favorite artists um, in the world. And grew up, growing up, he was incredible. And uh, so it was a huge honor to be the solo performer opening act for his North American tour. Uh, and and that got canceled because of COVID. Everything fell away as it did with a lot of other people. Uh, but I got the call in the last few weeks uh, or about a month ago that I'm first up for that tour and it's happening again in 2023. I'm not sure the dates yet, but very excited for this upcoming upcoming tours this year. Um, and, 
and that will give me another sense of profound gratitude and validation most likely and then it'll be on to the next tour you know so take that time i try to take that time to reflect and then um work, work for the next mountain to climb absolutely and with five minutes left in the speeding time i want to wrap up by asking you and i've asked this and i'm starting to ask this to artists um so i'll stick with it by asking this when you get to heaven if you were to play a song with anybody who's already there who would it be and why <laughs> oh my god wow that's a go so so no living only dead artists anybody who's already there oh my god oh dude i need five minutes to think of the answer um okay 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 um god i'm if see i'm gonna skip over somebody and then the, that's just gonna be a tragedy um i would say it would be the mo to be honest with you it would be to do a duet with Jeff Buckley. Uh, he is the opposite voice of mine, um, but could not be more inspired by such a beautiful human being. Uh, and I'm now the age he was when he passed away. Um, and God, he just was the best and does not get enough recognition for how insanely proficient and talented and diverse and genre defying and and one of the best voices to ever roam this earth um yeah and you know okay i gotta say also richie havens i love richie havens and and i think we would sound great together um harmonizing in our our voices and Johnny Cash, man. Okay, all right. Come on. There's too much. There's too much. There's too much. But I, I guess all right. I'll stick with I'll stick with my Buckley, my Jeff Buckley choice. All right. Um, well, we've come to the end of this interview, but thank you so much for chatting with me. Uh, to the listeners who've made it this far into the episode, thanks so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with American folk alternative indie singer songwriter Mendeley of Alan Blitz. You can find him on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and on TikTok. For more info, visit levsongs.com. To support the show, please feel free to share with family, friends, or on social media. You can find the podcast on all podcast streaming platforms. Lastly, you can find my show everywhere on social media. And I've been your host, Shady Kelsing. Thanks for tuning into the show. Mm -hmm.